And if anybody else doesn't feel safe at work, what can they do about it? There's a few things, but the options are quite limited. Option number one is to speak to your employer and try to get them to set up better systems. Now, that's stating the obvious and uh, most people have tried this already. Um, and maybe the employer will say yes. Uh, maybe like the callers you've just been playing, uh, they will have a conscience and will want to do the right thing. Uh, or maybe the employers will say no. So let's assume the employers either cannot or will not make the workplace safer. Option number two is to... Uh, get the help of your trade union if you're a member of a trade union because trade union reps are very very good at this sort of thing and employers do want to maintain good relationships with unions most of the time so maybe a union rep can help where you as an individual couldn't option number three and the, the dynamite option is number four, which I'm going to come to in a second. But option number three is you lodge a grievance. Uh, if nothing else, that means there'll then be a paper trail of your concerns and your complaints. And your employer will feel just that little bit more vulnerable because it knows it's at risk if something goes wrong. Option number four is the nuclear option. And that's to rely on something called Section 44 of the Employment Rights Act. Bit of a mouthful. And what that says is that every single employee has the right to stay at home and not go into work if they reasonably believe that going into work will will place them in serious and imminent danger. Now, because every single one of the laws that the government's been churning out about coronavirus over the last 10 months has said we're making these under emergency powers because of the serious and imminent danger of coronavirus, that serious and imminent danger bit is pretty much ticked. So anybody who reasonably believes, and it will be reasonable, that going to work will put them in serious imminent danger has a right to stay at home and they cannot be dismissed for it. But, and here's the big but, Eddie, and it's why I say it's the nuclear option, it's not clear whether that's staying at home paid or staying at home unpaid, because these laws were designed for coal mines, not for COVID, and uh, it, the laws never actually said when they were drafted whether it's paid or unpaid. And it's going to need a test case going all the way up to the Supreme Court, and that's going to take five years with the current court delays, to tell us, with hindsight, whether everyone who stayed at home should be paid or unpaid. So what a lot of employers are doing is taking the view, uh, well, we've taken legal advice. We've been told it's a gray area whether you're entitled to pay or not if you stay at home. So we're not going to pay you. Sue us. And maybe in five years' time, you'll get the money that we would have paid you anyway if, you, if we'd chosen to pay you. But we've had the benefit of five years' cash flow. And we've also had the benefit of making as many people come into work as possible because people won't want to take the risk and stay at home. 